What's going on guys? It's Manny here bringing you guys another Civilization Revolution video and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another strategy for winning on Diety which it should work in multiplayer too but this is mostly for people trying to get the achievements because I know a lot of people like to achievement hunt on games like this and you can take it from me I have every single achievement on this game and trust me it took a long time but I'm gonna help people get through it, and for this one, I'm gonna be trying to. Sh I'm gonna be showing you guys how to win with the worst civilizations in the game, and you don't even have to do this on deity difficulty, but I'm gonna do it anyways in an attempt to do it at least. Let's start with the Mongols. I definitely think they're the worst. I don't really have to do much explaining. They have no special units that get any advantage whatsoever. Okay, they got the cavalry plus one cavalry speed, but what, what good does that even do anyone in the medieval era? And the begin the game with plus 50% trade from captured cities isn't going to do me any good when I can't capture any cities. And plus the barbarian villagers joining us, uh, that's a huge disadvantage actually. I know you probably wouldn't think that, but it deprives you of all the gold and resources you get from the Mongols in the first place but I'm gonna be showing you guys like the best strategy at least that I would use to win with this civilization so we're gonna get into the game it's taking forever to load My, I'm not sure if I'm gonna split this one up into parts yet I might just end up doing it all at once Okay, we start right here. Can't really tell anything about the spot yet. Ooh. I'm gonna settle right here actually. Just because of all the production squares. Might not look like a good spot, but if we get really good production, it will be. We get a forest. Oh, it looks like we got city number one right here after we attack this barbarian village. We gotta attack it again, obviously, but... The worst part is, is a lot of the time you get a terrible, terrible spot for your cities. where you have no food at all and can't grow or no production or no science or it's pointless you wouldn't hear me saying this often but this is a good spot <laughs> for the barbarian for the city and we're going to keep expanding southward with that one we're going to take this warrior southward as well let's get bronze working first And we gotta expand southward with this warrior too. We're gonna look. Okay, see, this is also gonna be a good spot if we take this barbarian village. Another good spot, another good city. That's exactly what we need. And, okay, we gotta heal up, obviously. And we could have a mini empire to start the game, which is what you want. Oh, another city. This one's in a trash spot, though. You can already tell that fourth city's in a terrible, terrible spot. Best thing it's going to do is give, you, give us an early advantage on science. But this one's in a good spot. It's only going to get one technology, but let's see what else, other kind of resources there are. Okay, there's two hill squares and three production squares and a food square. That's good, actually. That's very, very good. Especially for these basically free cities we're getting from attacking these barbarians. Yeah, and I guess it, we don't have to worry about getting 100 gold to get our settler, even though we want to do that, too. And it's also annoying how your cities start at level 1 when you do that. Because normally when you start a city, 
your I think it's because of the settler takes out two, but you get your city starts out as a level two. Oh, and we are right next to the Greeks. Didn't see that coming. And they probably didn't want to be surrounded like this anyways, but sucks for them. They they get to deal with us. And let's see we got from this barbarian village. Okay. The good news is, since we're the Mongols, there's actually food here, a hill, technology, and once we actually get our extra production from mountain squares, because that's something the Mongols get an advantage for, the city could be pretty good. It's We've gotten really good spots and kind of lucked out so far in this game. I mean, I'm definitely not going to complain about it, though. We're kind of going to go slow in technology and everything, though. And we got it. Oh, there's like the Americans or something up there. The Romans can't really tell. Here's another spot. And this is... We can attack this one, too. That'd be another really good spot for a city. So that's a huge advantage. Since for the Mongols, we'll go horseback riding next. Okay, we beat that one. And hopefully we can get the second win, and we do. And it's the Americans. Okay, we know where they are. We got the Americans to the north, and the Greeks to the south. We already have one, two, three, four, five cities in 1800 BC. So that is a huge advantage of having the Mongols. One of the few and only advantages of having the Mongols. And now we're going to get to work on building up our cities. Because now we got more than enough cities to build this thing. We don't even really need to worry about it. We just need to worry about protecting them and building them at this point. Got these Americans following us. Not ideal. See, the problem is, from all that attacking, we only have 10 gold. What's... What are we... I'm obviously not going to be rich like this. We don't get nothing from the barbarian villages. We need to make sure I need to make sure all these cities are protected too. As long as they have a unit in there, these barbarians aren't just going to attack, or these other civs aren't going to attack out of nowhere. They have to at least declare war first. So that's important. Okay, and we got our horsemen. This is honestly probably one of the best starts I've ever gotten off. Gotten off here with the Mongols. So, I'm honestly probably just as surprised as anyone else is watching this video with how this is going so far. I mean, I think of myself as a pretty decent player of the game, but... The Mongols are the worst to play with. If you can win with them, you can definitely win with anyone. Now I got I was spent too long building a warrior unit. Now I have a warrior army in the city for no reason. There's gotta be more civs this way too. But you will find ones right over these hills. Oh no, but we got another barbarian village. If we can get there. Maybe the Americans are blocking off... Yeah, it looks like the Americans are blocking off the other civilizations. We're going to have our own little area along with the Greeks to thrive over here. And if that... And that's the case. Oh, it is. We're alone over here. We're going to get another free city. 
along with areas for <clears throat> other good cities. Like, I didn't see the star coming. This city right here will have a hill square, four technological squares, a, pro a forest square for production. It's got everything you'd want in a basic city. So we definitely got to get this. Got some veteran warriors. Found some areas for potential settling later in the game. Get whale and die. That's a that's a ways off. So I don't need even need to build the horsemen right now. Time to start building up the cities. Greeks are at five. They have walls yet. That's going to determine if we get masonry or not. And they don't. So let's go for it. Let's get try and get masonry. This will be what our sixth city over here. That's crazy. Akara. These cities can just grow. Six cities all across this little area we got here. You want to? I need to build up a few archer units in each city. Hopefully, take ten gold. We don't want to get attacked, but we want archer armies in each city, at least. We want some libraries. If we just have all these cities and they're growing quickly, we can outpace all the other civilizations. So you see Chicago gets set up very close to our civilizations. And we get our walls in... Karakorum. I'm not sure how to say it actually. What should I go next? I'm gonna go ceremonial burial. I'm gonna settle Solomon here. Just ceremonial burial, so eventually I can get temples in all my cities, so I can get this culture. If I get temples in all of these cities, this culture would go pretty much everywhere. Hopefully the Greeks and Americans aren't a problem later in the game, though. We're going to have our library built in Karakorum. Let's go right in next. And we're going to want to build a temple here next. See, now I have archer armies in multiple cities. See, those ones you don't have to worry about them being taken very easily. The Greeks are at 8, and we're at 6. Usually starting off with the Mongols, you're at a huge disadvantage for technology. And I would fall behind really quickly, but the fact that we're keeping up is a great sign. Americans having Col Colossus isn't, but we are the first ones to get writing. And let's go for Code of Laws. So now we get 8 technology in Nishapur too. So in total, 14s. We're getting 20 technology a turn, which overall is not bad at all. We get Code of Laws in two turns. For the first one, that should give us a trading post, but it's not. And we're not the first ones. It could be the Romans in the game, who knows. Navigation's quite a ways off, so let's go for literacy. And the Americans have declared war on us. But I'm going to cut off part one of this video here, guys. So if you did enjoy this video so far, there's going to be multiple parts. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for future 
civilization videos and for me to continue these series where I go by civilization by civilization teaching guys the best strategies to win the game.